Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Thank you for being here. It is a beautiful night. <clears throat> I don't have anything particular pre prepared, but I want to share some thoughts that I've had for the past few days. It's very uplifting and uh, gratifying seeing everything that the Lord's doing, not only in your life, but in the life of other people, also in areas, too. Uh, a few months ago, there was a movement that started in my beautiful island of Puerto Rico uh, that mayors of different towns were starting to uh, declare, or not declare, that's, that's not the word that I want to use, but anyway, they were basically giving their consent for churches to gather in uh, municipal buildings for 40 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, so one town started, then pastors and churches and through Christian radios and all that, they started promoting it, talking to other mayors. You need to do this in your town. This country needs this, you know? Uh, and it's true, it needs it because sadly, <laughs> Uh, the last two times that I visited, just walking down the streets in my own neighborhood, I don't feel safe. To the point that I do not wish to go back. Uh, but it's also really sad because my mother and my sisters and some of my other family are still there. So, you know, as time kept passing, more mayors started joining in other towns and whatnot, to the point that right now, uh, about 10 to 15 towns have already done the 40 days of prayer and fasting, and there's 12 towns that are doing it right now. Uh, one of those being my, my hometown. And, and um, you know, God has moved in, in amazing ways. For example, my mom was telling me that there was this one day that this uh, a homeless person came to the place of their gathering and they started doing this at five in the morning. So he, he came in because he knew what was happening and he talked to one of the pastors and said, I want to pray for you. This is a homeless person that we're talking about. And they say, sure, come in, you can do the prayer today. What's your name? Jesus is his name. And it's very humbling seeing a person that has nothing living in the streets, <coughs> yet he's praying for all the people that are in there that have a home, have food on their table, and he's asking the Lord to bless them, to make them prosperous, to heal them from whatever it is that is ailing them and all that. So it, it, it fills my heart with joy that those things are happening. Also, the things that are happening here in this church, uh, you know, revelation that is being given to everybody through the messages that the pastor gives and all that. And uh, when, when I'm able to witness, even if it's something very small of... Uh, something that God's doing that you can you can truly see that it's coming from him I get really excited and uh, today I had a conversation with my wife uh, that during the conversation something was said that made me uneasy and I got scared right there and at that very moment, the Lord told me, didn't I ask you to trust me? 
Shouldn't I tell you that I am taking care of this? And as soon as he said that to me, I saw the, the true meaning of what happened, which is something positive, which is something that I've been praying for to happen. So I just want to say, keep believing him and trusting him. I know it's hard sometimes for us as human beings to let go because we want to hold on to the whatever little control we have over something. But when we let go and we let him take care of the situation and take control, that's when we're going to get what he promised us because he said, I will take care of you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. His word is true. His promises are real. And he cannot lie. So. Anyone has anything they want to share? Ten seconds left. Please, John. (laughs)
stand and let's thank the Lord for all of our blessings for everything that he's doing Father we thank you for your revelation Lord for presenting yourself into the lives of those that are here and the lives of those that are not here as well Lord for showing to us who you are for giving us your word and your promises Father and those that we believe in because you know, we know, Lord, that those are going to come to pass. We declare right now the healing on those that are in need of healing. Because you have said it, Father, that by Jesus' stripes we are healed. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He died for our sins so that we become the righteousness. Your righteousness. Friday, Eastern Gatehouse Prayer. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Thank you, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. <clears throat> the Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of the servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Thank you, Lord. Mark, could you take the offering, please?
us worship. He that is worthy.
none like you, Lord. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your favor, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the impossible and making it our reality. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thanks again, worship team. Praise God. I'm just going to... I had some... This I wrote in my Bible a long time ago. I don't know how many years ago quite a few, but it's from uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Oddly enough, it goes along with what I'm going to teach on tonight, but it's certainly not part of what I was down here, but in, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse uh, 23, I think it is, he says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Of course, we know that's not talking about our cardiac deal here, the blood pump. It's, it's about the inner us, our essence, our spirit. And uh, here are some of the things I had jotted down back whenever this was. And out of your belly, out of the innermost or spirit, flows rivers of living water. If you remember the, the river that the Bible talks about flowing and uh, feeding the tree of life from which the fruit of life comes. And I have here all the issues of our lives flow out like rivers from one central location, our spirit. And what we do in developing that one place determines the outcome of our lives, which is what we've been talking about here for a few weeks, about developing that, the inner man, the, the real who we are, right? By operating by the Spirit. And as 
Mark was saying and also Roberto, I thought this, uh, which is what caused me to look back here in the first place, was that we live at a continuous crossroads, a place between mystery and revelation, a place between what we see going on in the natural realm and what we know to be true by the Spirit. So we're always at this crossroads as Christians, as believers, between mystery, between confusion, you know, uncertainty, and revelation, which is reality. Amen? Our job is to trust God with the problems and the situations that we don't understand and focus on what we know to be true according to the Word of God. In other words, we don't think about that. We don't worry about the issues that we can't explain that are going on necessarily, but we focus on what the Word of God says about it. That's, that's living by faith. This is how uncomplicated this really is. And so our success in keeping our heart or keeping our spirit determines the measure of kingdom breakthrough that we're going to experience in life or manifestation, if you want. In other words, uh, my internal reality mostly defines the nature of my external reality, ultimately. It's what Roberto was saying, you know, just in different words. Now, that leads me up to, well, I'll just read this. Proverbs 23, 7. Look, can you put that up there, Roberto? 23 and 7, yeah. And then we'll just move into the text. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As he thinks in his heart, as a person believes from the inner man, is what they are. That's why it's so important that we renew our minds, that we operate from that truth, from that reality of the Spirit. Because if, as Roberto said, uh, that's when God speaks to us. He doesn't speak to you through your intellect. He speaks through your spirit. So even though your intellect is getting all this information and, and uh, uh, facts Truth comes to us by the Spirit. And isn't it amazing how the truth always sets you free? Even though you may be feeling like you're held captive to this natural circumstance or situation, when the truth comes, it's like you've just been released from it. So, uh, our, the Spirit thinking is what we have to be operating from. We have to operate from that, from that reality, the spiritual reality. Now, let's just I'm just gonna move right on into the text for tonight. And we'll move right on through this. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. And I want to talk to you about your testimony. In other words, about you, who you are. So, in a lot of ways, I'm just speaking to you. Uh, you know, uh, after the fact. In other words, this is a done thing. It's just a question of us operating out of this reality. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh, Roberto could have quoted this, but he didn't. He just used his own words, but that's fine. He, this is what he was saying. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So let's analyze this real briefly. It's trust in the Lord Jehovah, or trust in Jehovah, with your whole being. Stop leaning on your own understanding. That's spirit versus sense knowledge. All right? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification 
<clears throat> and redemption. Now, I've used this scripture several times over the last few weeks, but I think it's important that we go back and look at this. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Now, most of us could say, okay, just natural knowledge would tell us that, you know, we, circumstances are not what we'd like them to be, you know, just, you know. But the problem with knowledge is without wisdom applied, it will get you all screwed up. My dad used to say, you know, uh, he kind of had, had an ad attitude towards people who went to college because he never made it through high school. But he was a very intelligent guy, and he made a lot of money, and he had several businesses. But he just had a problem with educated idiots, he called them, because they didn't seem to know how to apply the knowledge they had. Now, my dad was far from perfect, believe me, but he did have a lot of wisdom wisdom that came from actually doing things and applying things in circumstances and finding out this works, that doesn't work regardless of what some professor told me, you know, or what I read in a book. Application is always the final, you know, answer to the test, praise the Lord. So that was, that was kind of his way of dealing with it. And what you find is that so many times we have the wisdom of God. That's the spirit. That's what the spirit is. It's the mind of Christ. So when we don't utilize that, we're stuck with knowledge. And the trouble with knowledge is you have to have experiences to develop it. Well, most of us are not going to live long enough to experience everything that we need to experience in order to be successful. <laughs> I mean, that's why we depend on other people that have gone before us and, you know, what other people have accomplished. So... I don't want to spend my entire life. I spent the first 30-some years of my life in experiences. I, I learned some stuff. But if I'd have continued that way, I wouldn't have lived this long. One of those experiences would have eventually killed me. I don't need to experience everything. I don't need to know every, I don't have to experience every bad thing to know that it's not a good thing. You know what I mean? And it's the same way with just natural knowledge. We need wisdom. We need to operate by the Spirit in order to apply that knowledge in a way that can be, you know, effective, that can be positive. Praise the Lord. We are in Him. Praise the Lord. We are not common human beings. We have literally been lifted out of the common natural realm. You have to remind yourself of this because you're surrounded by the common natural realm even though that's not your realm. We've been lifted out of that, out of the common, and into the super realm. We've been born again. We are children of God. We are new creations. We are God-life people. Spirit people living in bodies. We, we've gone outside the realm of the senses. That's why it's difficult when we go back to the senses and try to operate and we, and we screw up because it doesn't match with who, our identity and what we see in the Bible we're supposed to be experiencing. So we have, to, we, we have to operate outside the realm of sense knowledge because we have passed over into the realm of the spirit or into the spirit realm, into the kingdom. Now you can't live in the kingdom and, and, and apply sense, world, knowledge and expect to get what the kingdom can get you. Sense knowledge is for the world. Amen? The wisdom of God, the spirit, is for the kingdom of God. Where all of your stuff is. Your healing, your deliverance, your, your, everything, your prosperity, everything, all your provision, it's all there in the kingdom. But you don't get that from sense knowledge. You get that by the spirit, by the inner man. The problem is we've been taught so much about the outer man, the natural man in church, how he's always doing bad stuff and reminding us of all that, that we have a tendency then to have this schizophrenic kind of way of living. We are one thing, but we're acting as though we're something else, and we get all confused in it, and the, as the Bible explains it, a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways and don't think that they can get anything from God. They can't access the things of the kingdom 
with this mixture of righteousness and unrighteousness, of spirit and flesh, of sense and wisdom. It's a contradiction, a constant contradiction. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen? He's able to do exceeding abundantly above everything that we ask or think, and he does it according to the power that's in us. Not according to some external thing, but according to something that's already a part of us, a part of who we are. God, God's ability is at work in you right this moment, right this very moment. It's eternal life. It's going on all the time. It'll never stop. It, from the moment of the rebirth, the new birth, the regeneration, it began, and it won't stop for eternity. It continues. It's ongoing. You've got grace that has been given to you. Grace isn't just an, you know, a pass for bad behavior. Grace is the favor of God in every situation, in every circumstance. Praise the Lord. So it, it's, it's according, this grace, this favor of God has got nothing to do with your external man, your sense person, your acts of goodness or evil or any of that. It's all about the spirit. And it's the favor of God is given to you according to the measure of the gift of Christ, which is the fullness of God. Limitless, in other words. Absolutely limitless. Amen? So you, you have to come to know. You, you need to come to know. You should come to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. That's where you ought to be living all the time. That's what you ought to be experiencing. That's what you ought to be thinking and feeling and expecting and receiving. It's not, it's, it's unending. His love for you is without measure. And it's based on that that the favor comes, not based on you, based on him. It passes, and here's the issue, it passes all sense evidences. Praise the Lord. It's, it's ongoing, regardless of what your senses, what the evidence is your senses are receiving. The Scripture says that you will be filled, in fact, it's actually past tense, are filled, with all the fullness of God. Right this moment, as you sit there listening to me, you are filled with all the fullness of God. John 1, 16. And of his fullness... Have all we received, and grace upon grace. Now, you guys, this is the word of God. This is the truth. This is spiritual reality. You have entered into his fullness, into his life. You have the unsearchable riches of, of Christ meaning there's no end to it you don't finally just find a pot of gold somewhere it just goes on and on and on and on it's unsearchable it's it's never ending you are seated with him you died with him you were buried with him You've been raised with him, and again, you are now seated with him. That's the reality. It's not, a, it's not some uh, philosophical metaphor. It's not just some, you know, religious thing to say. That is the reality. If you're a believer, that is your, that is your biography, You are one with him. You cannot be separated from him. I'll never leave you or forsake you. 
Lo, I'm with you always. Of course he is, because he's one with us. He's not just in me. He is me. And I'm him. We are one. Likewise, you have that same testimony. That's why he says, and greater things than these will you do. In this life, there's not going to be any test as great and no reward as rich as to trust him with all of your being. That's the test we face every day. Not that God is testing us to see whether we're righteous or not, but the test is, is for us to receive the reward, the, the, the inheritance, the blessing. And it's something we have to pass every time. How many of you know you can have a breakthrough, and most of us have had these things on different levels and in different ways. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was a sickness or something we were healed from or a financial breakthrough or whatever it is. And when we had it, there's this kind of a yaha moment, you know, a, a, a wow, I've arrived. I get it. You know, I understand it. You know what I mean? It's like revelation. It's, this is how it works. I know. I see it now. It's a God thing. I just believe. I just trust him. And tomorrow, you'll be faced with another one just like it, only it's like you never had the other one. It's like it's unique somehow, and now you get, you're being tested again. It's not God doing the testing. It's life. It's being a spirit living in a sense-dominated world. And that's the greatest test that we have. But there's no reward that is greater than passing that test, yeah. which is simply to do what Proverbs says. Trust in him with all of your being and do not lean to your sense knowledge. 1 Peter chapter uh, 5 and verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That is resting in him. That is the position that he declares that we're in, seated with him. Of course we are. How can we not be if we're one? But we have to rest in that. Because as Roberto again said, thank you for prefacing everything I was going to say tonight. It's always helpful. Um, when you're resting in him, fear can't dominate you. Because that's, the fear always comes. It wants to dominate you. It wants to distract you. It wants to take you to a place of darkness where you don't have revelation, where you're not, where you're not operating in the spirit. You're operating strictly by the senses. Because you've had an experience or somebody else had an experience. And now you're seeing that thing kind of show up in front of you and you go, oh, my God. The thing that I feared the most has come upon me. Praise the Lord. Resting in him. You're supposed to be resting while the others are laboring. You're supposed to be resting while the others are crying out and praying in fear. Oh, my God, it's not going to happen. They're begging to not be a failure. Don't let me fail. Don't let this thing happen, you know. That is not prayer. That is fear. You can't pray in fear. You have to pray in faith. If you're going to pray, pray in faith. If you're not, then just testify or, or uh, confess what the Word of God says. If you don't pray believing you already have it, you're not going to have a successful prayer. You're praying in unbelief, and it produces nothing. Praise the Lord. You're resting in his rest. You're living in his peace. He sat down. You're seated. That's victory. That's success. 
See, redemption, born again, whatever you want to call it, but I'm just, I'll, I'll just call it redemption because that's what he uses there in, in 1 Corinthians 1.30. But redemption is in the realm of the spirit. It's not in the realm of the flesh. I've, I've, I've said this several times. Most all of you know it, but sometimes it's good that we remind ourselves. Redemption is in the realm of the spirit. Your flesh, your senses didn't get redeemed. They are as flesh and human as, and carnal as they were before you got born again. Praise the Lord. The only change is to the degree that your mind has been renewed. Right? Redemption is in the realm of the spirit. It's your spirit that gets redeemed, that gets born again, that gets made alive or quickened. Amen? So, your new person is supernatural. Your new reality is supernatural. By definition, it has to be. It can't be anything else. Right? Which is proof positive that we operate by sense knowledge 90% of the time. Because we don't see ourselves as supernatural. We see somebody else as supernatural. So we go to them and have them pray for us. Or we plead with the supernatural God to do something for us that he's already done for us. Praise God. It's this spirit, redemption. It's beyond human reason to understand. Because it's supernatural. Without revelation knowledge, you can't get you won't ever get it. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians, but let's go back to First Corinthians 1 30 again. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, of who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Look at that. Let's just look at this again. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Of him are ye in Christ Jesus. I love that. Mm -hmm. Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. You know, I read, you know, English alone is a mess. But King James, he put the capital M in mess. I mean, he just, he knew how to, they just somehow. But, I mean, you have to marvel at the unique lunacy of a language where a house can burn up as it burns down. Yeah. Or you... You fill in a form by filling it out. I mean, I don't know how anybody learns the language. And yet, we think that's wisdom. Words cannot express this truth. It's received by the Spirit. It's given by the Spirit. The words that I speak, Jesus said, they are spirit and their life. They have to be received by the eternal life of God that's in us, God life, spiritually. Can you see this? By, by, by this redemption, we are separated from the world's dominion and the things of the world. Sense knowledge. That's what Jesus is talking about when he says, come out from among them and be you separate. He's not talking about, you know, come out from among them and dress really strange and be weird. He's saying, quit operating by their knowledge and start operating by your supernatural wisdom by the Spirit. Because if you don't, you're only going to get what they get. Jesus is our wisdom. You know, the, the, 
the wisdom of God was never experienced. It was never really enjoyed by natural men. Once in a blue moon, more often, uh, less often than that, in fact, except on special, rare occasions would man operate in God's wisdom. Solomon was one. Joshua was one. God gave them this supernatural wisdom. It was a special act of grace upon indi an individual here and then one another thousand years later or 500 years later. I mean, that's the way it was. Natural man just didn't experience it. But today, he is made wisdom to each of us as believers. Every recreated man and woman is a legal recipient of this wisdom. Just as surely as you have a right to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free, to be saved, to go to heaven, you have the wisdom of God, Christ. You have, if you have Christ, you have that wisdom. If you're born again, if you're in Christ. Now, they may never know it or use it, but just think about it. How many Christians, quote, unquote, born again people, receive righteousness? All of them. But the vast majority never utilize the benefits of it because they don't believe that they really are righteous. Sometimes they're righteous when they're really good. So it's a constant teeter-totter kind of thing between my behavior and God's smiling on me because of that good behavior or his anger because of my misbehavior. When in fact, I am the righteousness of God in Christ every single moment of eternity. This is the essence of it. Every new creation has a legal right to this wisdom. It belongs to you. You can use it whenever there's a need. You say, well, how, how can that be? Through the word. You meditate on the word. You believe what the word says. Listen, you don't have, it, most of us here, I'm not saying do this. I'm saying we, if, if they took away all the Bibles tomorrow, we have enough of this word in us that we could still do everything God has told us to do. Because it isn't just about quoting it. It's understanding the reality of it and operating from that, from that wisdom. Praise God. When you, when you do... It, 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 it operates like this. You, you read the word. You think about the word. You meditate on that word, whatever, whatever it is. And then you do things that the word tells you to do. You know what that is? That's living in the word. Yeah. It's not complicated. We think it's some great challenge. It's like you've got to get a... Uh, a doctorate in this. A baby Christian can do this. Anybody can. Walking in the Word, living the, in the Word is not goody, 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 I just never do anything wrong, I'm perfect, I'm all that. No, it's, it's just thinking that Word, doing that Word, acting on that Word. The just shall live by faith. It's believing. It's doing what Proverbs admonishes us to do. Trust the Lord with your entire being and stop leaning on your sense knowledge. That's living the word. You, you could get to where and this is what I think God's trying to do with us, is to get us to where we think the word. 
We don't think the circumstance. You understand what I'm saying? We immediately respond because we have proactively walked in the word so that when a situation arises, we're not always in this reactionary state of, oh my God, what next? What do I do now? We're thinking the word. So we're never confounded by our senses. Hallelujah. You'll get to where your life is what the Bible says it already is. That is, your life is blended with the Logos. Or you and Jesus are one. He's the Word. Th this is the reality. This is the essence of what we're dealing with. We think of it in abstract, convoluted, kind of disassociated ways. This is one thing, I'm born again, I'm one with Jesus, and then you know, how I apply this oneness to my life is something altogether different. No, it's all the same thing. It's all part and parcel of this supernatural redemption of us being united with God in Christ. It only makes sense that we would live out our lives as a reflection of that rather than a reflection of the world. I mean, that's where he's trying to get us to, to where we think the word. However a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're thinking from your spirit, you're going to act from your spirit and thereby get the results of that action. It's not rocket science. It's, it's, it's really very simple. It has nothing to do with your behavior in terms of doing good or, or not doing good. It has to do with the, with the way you operate, the way you think. Think according to the Spirit, you get the results of the Spirit. Think according to the flesh, and you get the results of the flesh. No matter whether you're born again or not. You see, to a certain degree, in the natural realm, a sinner can benefit from the Word of God if they apply it. In fact, there are more self-help programs and have been throughout, God knows, uh, that have been based on the biblical principles, and they do work. They don't get people saved. They don't get them to heaven. But the principles will still work if they can discipline themselves. I mean... We've got such a great opportunity because we have the Spirit of God. We have innately in us the wisdom, the knowledge, the power. We just All we have to do is agree with it. And it will produce what it produces. And we've talked about how the Holy Spirit came to, uh, to give to man God ability. See, he, God couldn't give uh, man ability under the Old Covenant. He couldn't give them God ability, not without a special interdiction on the part of God. They were natural people. Now, understand this. Now, you say, well, you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. We're talking about two different dispensations. We're now in the dispensation of grace. Everybody is benefiting from grace, whether they are born again or not. Judgment's not coming on them the way it would if they were still under the, the, the original covenant. That's why you don't see entire races of people being destroyed, even though they're anti-God and anti-Israel, anti-Christian. Right? Because there's grace for everything on this planet is, is experiencing the grace of God. But under that old covenant, there was no way that they could receive God's ability. Now, I'm not saying these people are getting God's ability, but if they applied biblical principles, they could operate in those same areas. You understand what I'm saying? We have received, by 
by virtue of this redemption, this supernatural redemption, we have received the ability of God. How could we not if we have God? If we are one with God, God doesn't separate himself from that ability. It's part of his nature. It's who he is. It's what he is. Right? Again, we, so how can we not? He, he, we have entered into his fullness. Not into a measure. The only measure is the full measure of Jesus. Who said, the fullness of the Godhead dwelled in him bodily. Praise God. Recreated man has God's ability. It may lie dormant, it may be latent, but it's there. We have it, period. God's very life is in you. You can't separate that ability from his life. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. Resurrection power is in you. Not to a measure. What the power that is in us would mock the atomic bombs, all of them. He created the atoms that they're trying to split to create these things. Praise God. God's very life is in you. Now, let, let me, let's, let's look at a couple of things here in reference to wisdom again. Genesis chapter 25, and uh, let's just look at uh, verses 29 through 34. This is about Esau. We all know this, but just let's look. Wisdom, look, Esau had knowledge. Don't kid yourself. He wasn't stupid. He just didn't have any wisdom. He didn't have spirit wisdom. He didn't have the mind of Christ. So Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, which is red, is what Edom means. Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau knew he was the firstborn. He, don't kid yourself that he didn't know the promises that had been passed down from Abraham to his father Isaac. They knew. He had sense knowledge. He had natural knowledge, but he had absolutely no spirit wisdom. So it had no real value to him. In other words, he couldn't take advantage of it because he operated by the senses and not by the spirit. Jacob, on the other hand, was a very, uh, what's the word? Selfish, self-centered, conniver, manipulator, user, but he had spiritual understanding, which had nothing to do with his sensual behavior. We always, we confuse that between these two, thinking, well, Esau was good. No, they, they were the same. Naturally, I'm saying. But there was something spiritual about Jacob. Praise the Lord. He had no, Esau had no wisdom by which he could use his knowledge. So it had, a, had little or no value to him. That's the message. That's, the, that's what we're to get from that. Amen? All right, let's look at something else here. Look at Judges chapter 13, verses uh, just 24 and 25. And a woman bare a son and called his name. This is Manoah. This is Samson's parents. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. The child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times 
in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtol. Now, he had knowledge. Look, he knew that he was told this is a miraculous birth. He knew that. He was told that. His mother separated him, made him a, a, a Nazarite or Nazarene. Uncut hair, uh, you know, no shaving, uh, no wine, no certain, you know, I mean, all of this separation. She was trying to show him something about his identity. But the only thing he knew about his identity was external. He didn't get it. He, he had the knowledge of this stuff, but no spiritual wisdom. Now look at verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 21. Yeah, 16 and verse 21. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. So here you got Samson, a blind hero in captivity. And the lesson here is that Satan is still blinding God's heroes. They're spiritualized. He has darkened their understanding by keeping them in sense knowledge instead of operating by the spiritual truth. There is untapped power, limitless power sitting right in this room to do things with the kingdom of God to, to transform this world and the way Satan fights against it is to put out your eyes and to take you into captivity you have strength that Samson couldn't even have dreamed of But the devil does the same thing with us that he did with Samson. He blinds us, spiritually speaking, and takes us captive to our sense knowledge, to our physical being, so that we never tap this tremendous strength and ability that we have in Christ, the wisdom and the knowledge. Amen? John chapter 12, uh, verses 35 and 36. Well, wait a minute. Back up to Matthew, if you will. Sorry. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Let's look at that first. The light of the body is the eye. If, there, if therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If you have spiritual sight, you're seeing by the Spirit. Your whole body operates by the Spirit. In other words, you're operating in revelation knowledge all the time. You're operating by, in a, just another way of saying it, what I said earlier, we're thinking the Logos. We're thinking the Word. We're one with that, right? Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, John chapter 12 now, verse 35 and 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Now that was still under the old covenant, but he was telling them about what's coming. He was telling them right now this light is available if you'll just receive it, if you'll just have spiritual eyes to see it, right? Well, we have, we have this is our life. This is our lifetime, maybe is a better way of saying it. For a little while the light is with you. Well, the light is with us, as long as we're alive and breathing. Actually, it'll be with us for eternity, but it's significant right now in terms of how we relate to it. Walk while you have the light, 
walk in agreement with that light, lest the darkness come upon you. What darkness? Sense knowledge. Your natural man. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. It's a crapshoot. Who knows what tomorrow will bring, you know? What am I going to do about this? How am I going to handle that? Right? While you have light, believe in the light. Operate by that reality, right? That you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now, I like the way he says that. Things. Praise the Lord. Put all things, I don't care what it is, anything is under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness, again, of him that filleth all in all. You... Guess what, church? You are his feet. You are the body. Everything is under you. He's put it under his feet. All things are beneath you. Praise God. The body has the same authority as the head had on this earth. The body can only do what the head tells it to do. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8, uh, verse 36. See, we, we question because of experience. Now, I may be the only one here thinking this, but the thoughts do come to your mind. Well, then why? Right? See? See? Sense knowledge wants to dominate. That's where you have to come back with. It doesn't matter what my experience has been. It doesn't matter what anybody's experience has been. It doesn't matter what the senses tell us. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday or 10 minutes before you got here. This is the truth. And until we get our mind renewed to that and walk in agreement with it, we'll be having the same arguments with ourselves all the way up to the time they shove us into the casket. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free... Ye shall be free indeed. The question then arises, what are we doing with our freedom? If we've been freed from the bondage of, of sense knowledge and, and uh, uh, sense uh, behavior, what are we doing with our freedom? Right? You're like the they talk about doing this with bulls and other animals. They'll stake them out for years. Elephants even, they'll put a chain on them, stake them out. They're there for 10 years, 15 years, take the chain off the elephant and just stand there. He's free, but he don't know it. He's so used to being there, that's what he thinks it's supposed to be, so he don't even try to move out from it. And that's where we are a lot of times, spiritually speaking. Amen. Look at uh, let's look at Romans chapter three and verse twenty-four. We'll wrap this up in about five minutes here. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Again, this the supernatural redemption. Justified freely by His grace through the redemption. So, humanity, man was not created for slavery. Man wasn't created for bondage. To be weak is to be a slave. Powerless. To be in want is to be in bondage. You're, you're in bondage to what you don't have. In every generation of Israel's uh, history, if you, if you go back to the Bible, there were men and women who entered into the supernatural realm, albeit temporary and, and only as the Spirit moved on them. It still happened. 
Men and women who, who believed God's word and who trusted in it with all of their being. Without this unity, you know, without this oneness, and yet they still had experience. They still had these supernatural experiences because they believed God. How much more us? Matthew 17 and verse 20. 17 and verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, grasp this, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing. These are the words coming right out of God's mouth. He cannot lie, as was declared earlier. It has to be the truth. It has to be reality. If Jesus conquered the devil, and we know he did, he paraded him openly in defeat. Then you conquered the devil. You were buried with him. Right? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Jesus dethroned him. And he knows it. But he's still blinding and holding captive to, the, to world knowledge or to sense knowledge those of us who don't know it even though it's our reality as surely as it's Jesus's. It can't be anything other than that. It can't be his and not ours. The truth sets men free. And that truth is the supernatural wisdom of God, not the knowledge of this world. Amen? Back to Proverbs chapter 3, <clears throat> verses 5 and 6. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. You'll know where you're going because he's directing the path. Amen. We need to meditate on that. Trust in the Lord with your entire being. Stop leaning on sense knowledge. And your path will lead straight into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen. That's who we are. That's our testimony. Hallelujah. Let's live it. Let's be it. Let's walk it. Amen. Everybody's qualified. Everybody's capable. Everybody is more than able. Just do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. Hope we'll see you back here Friday. Amen. Come and uh, expect God to speak through us and to us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.